object. Senator from Idaho. Reserving the right to object. Uh, I appreciate my colleagues' commitment to this issue and to your constituents. Uh, as you know, this legislation has been before us for some time now, and there is controversy over it. This bill would retroactively reinstate pension benefits for a small subset of participants whose pensions have already been transferred to the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, or PBGC. That would create a precedent that other plans would follow. The PBGC exists specifically to cover pension benefits if a plan is terminated. So we should let the system work. This system does not require taxpayer dollars for a bailout or for whatever one would like to call it. That's part of the reason for the, for the objection. We also have an obligation to be deliberate in how we spend taxpayer money. Before we inject more money into the system, we should explore the implications of this bill, which brings me to my final point. The Finance Committee has not held a hearing, not a single hearing, let alone a markup on this bill. The Finance Committee exists to examine proposals such as this and to provide all senators an opportunity to weigh in. I'm willing to work with my chairman, Senator Wyden, on this and with Senator Brown and with Senator Portman and other senators who are interested in the issue so we can see if there is a need and a way that we can address this issue specifically without creating a precedent that would deal with the rest of the entire system that has been put together to, to address terminated plans. Because of the need for us to have regular order deliberation and consideration of this legislation, I must today object. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Ohio. Um, I thank Senator Crapo. Senator Crapo and I have worked together on a number of things. He was chair of the banking committee the last four years. I was his ranking member and worked with him and Greg and his staff on a number of things. And I take him at his word. I know that Senator Portman and Senator Crapo and I sit also in the finance committee. Uh, and uh, I'm serious about this. I just had a private conversation with Senator Crapo. He seems serious. I know Senator Portman is. We, we've, we've waited too long. This, there are far too many people. It's not a huge number, as Rob, as Senator Portman said, uh, not a huge number of people, but it's awfully important to them. And I, I know what it means to a community that's struggling, like the Mahoning Valley and the Miami Valley. Those two communities have, have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these retirees. And when their pension shrinks like this, um, it affects their buying power, affects their standard of living, and it affects the prosperity of the community. So we will be back together working on it. So I thank Senator Crapo on that. I'm disappointed, but I thank him. And Mr. President, I um, ask that the following remarks be on the record in a different place. That objection. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I rise today on, a, for a, on, a, on a, uh, a cheerful duty, if you will, to recognize Bill Nell, who retired this month after a long career of service, not working in the Senate, but sort of working around the Senate. Bill was deputy director of the congressional program at the Aspen Institute, something not particularly known to the public. It's a nonprofit working to bring together diverse perspectives to solve challenges facing the United States and the world. Bill was the second hire when the Aspen Institute's congressional program began. He's one of the Institute's longest serving employees, 35 years at Aspen. Almost every week, for as long as I can remember, that the Senate and the House were in session, Bill brought together Democrats and Republicans from across the ideological spectrum for breakfast and conversations with leading, leading policy scholars. Typically on a Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, uh, you'd come and there'd be 10 or 15 or 20 House and Senate members, fairly evenly divided, depending on the topic perhaps, between the parties, and a scholar or an activist or someone that Bill generally recruited came in and talked to us, and it, it, helped, it, it helped educate us for sure. It brought us together in ways that the public doesn't necessarily see, but helped us discuss issues with each other, and, and, and we, learned, we learned in so many ways about each other and about these public issues. We learned from experts, we learned from each other. Um, Bill helped host 636 breakfasts. We counted, someone counted them at Aspen over his career of service. During the hustle and bustle of the work week, these Aspen breakfasts were a welcome respite where members of Congress could 
could come to listen and discuss and learn from experts with little partisanship involved. But he, Bill had brought in these experts. We learned from them. We learned from one another. I wish everyone could sit in on those breakfasts and see the thoughtfulness of so many members of both parties in Congress. It really, it really taught me a lot about partisanship that, that most of my colleagues here, I would not say everyone, but most of my colleagues here are here for the right reasons and want to do a good job and the thoughtfulness exhibited in those meetings was so important. Bill was diligent about bringing a balanced presentation of topics and experts at the forefront of their fields. These breakfasts help us to consider others' perspectives and think about things we might not have thought about otherwise. Sometimes we found common ground and experience or opinion or priority that our constituents share. It's how we got things done. Whenever we could find agreement, we worked together to accomplish things for the people whom we serve. It, it brings to mind uh, one of my colleagues who was about to retire, Roy Blunt from Missouri. He served with me in the House. I knew him actually even before that. And he one time said, he's a conservative Republican, and I'm decidedly not. And he said, I've known Sherrod Brown for 30 years, and we've agreed exactly five times. And then he laughed. And then he said, but all five of those are federal law. And that's what really matters here. I mean, Senator Crapo and I look at the world very differently. Senator Portman and I look at the world very differently. But Senator Portman and I put together the strongest language uh, ever in federal law on Buy America. Uh, we've done a number of issues like that when you may look at things differently, but you find things you can agree on and you go to town and make it happen. Those, and, and so back to Bill, those who work closely with him describe him as one of the hardest working people they know. And you can see that in these breakfasts. By virtue of his diligence and his preparation, Bill was able to make his job, which was anything but this, appear effortless. His longtime colleague, former Secretary, Congressman Dan Glickman, former Ag Secretary, recognized Bill as, quote, the soul of Aspen, as a natural leader and a jack of all trades. His current boss, former Congressman, until his retirement last week, former Congressman Charlie Dent, Glickman's a Democrat, Dents a Republican, called Bill an anti-procrastinator, a title, when I called him on the phone to talk about him, it's a title rare in a town where procrastination seems to be everyone's middle name. Bill's enduring personality is kindness, and he was nothing if not kind, brought so many together. He made people feel comfortable. He made people heard. I have no idea what his ideology or his party was. We didn't talk about that. He just served and helped us, helped us understand. He seemed to have no enemies in doing his job. In retirement, Bill is spending time back in his beloved Montana, just outside of Yellowstone, one of my favorite places in the country where I years ago took my daughters as a single parent on a train to see Yellowstone for a week. He's spending time in his beloved Montana with his beloved wife, Cindy, a retired public school teacher and an education activist. The Aspen Breakfast will continue. Bill will be missed by all of us, blessed by his kindness and his curiosity and his capability. He made this place work better. He reminded us of the importance of self-government, of democracy. It's up to us to uphold that legacy, to keep working with each other towards a better future for the people whom we serve. Thank you so much, Bill Nell. We wish you the best in retirement. Thank you, Mr. President.